Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Booyah Podcast. Today, I've got one of my longtime best friends, Mike DePamphilo. Welcome, man. Thank you. I'm happy to be back. <laughs> it's uh, been a little while, dude. Where you been? Uh, in a cave. <laughs> and in, a, in my house and, uh, you know, just taking some time to... to to, you know, study and, and uh, pass this stupid test. And, uh, but now we're back and we're going to enjoy ourselves this summer. Well, okay, let, let's back up a minute here. You've been gone for how three, long? Three months. Three months. So yeah. for those watching right now, you're probably wondering, where has Mike been? It's just been Jesse on guitar for the past three months. He's been studying like a madman for a test, a very... Very big test called the, uh, wait, I got this, hold on, <laughs> PE test, right? Yes, it is. Well, yeah. What is it? Stand it's a for? physical education test. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's an engineering test. and uh, Professional engineering yeah, test, right? I've basically been working on it for about three years. Wow. And, uh, there were other tests that came before it, and this was like the final step in order to I guess become like a licensed engineer. Wow. So, and then now it's now it's over. Well, look, tell me about the prep work, man, because, uh, I mean, you literally have been in a cave, like you said. Like, what does the prep work, prep work look like getting ready for a test like that? It's, I guess it's, it's not that uh, uh, glorious. Uh, it's um, me in a, in, in a room and probably just being smelly and wearing clothes, <laughs> old clothes, and Hannah coming in, and my wife uh, coming in and giving me snacks. And but pretty much it was it was studying an hour before work every day, two okay. hours every single night, and anywhere from five to nine hours Saturday and Sunday. So it, for the last like, it, it started in September, and it ends in the last week. But for the last two and a half months, it was averaging around 20, 25 hours a week. 25 hours a week of studying. And there was a prep course involved with all this too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, so today, ladies and gentlemen, we got the results of this test. <laughs> and actually, I, I will preface by saying, <laughs> I admittedly am a little unprepared for, for this, uh, for this podcast because I had asked Mike before, I was like, hey man, um, so stoked to have you back on a Booyah. Um, do you want to do the podcast, the Booyah podcast? And he said, that's going to be entirely dependent on whether I pass this test or not. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, okay, we're going to do game time decision. If the vibe's not there, maybe we'll do, you know, a, like a later um, episode at another time. But um Drum roll again. Uh, he I'm here. He passed. Here. He's here. <laughs> so, but I didn't let Sam know until I got here. Yeah. Congrats, dude. <laughs> Thank you. Seriously, so proud yeah. of you, dude. You, I could tell how much work you put into that, and uh, and now we're we're just gonna have a good summer, and, and right, and pretty much next next phase of this thing is is getting you married. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. May twenty fifth, baby coming up i know i know it's it's been a crazy ride for all of us i mean you know the especially like lately it's feeling like everybody i talk to on this podcast is um i'm asking them like where have you been where have you been adam right like where have you been yeah. adam or like um billy last time i had billy i was like billy where have you been you know we're we all got we're all like moving into like these new chapters of our lives and having to, I don't know, like put certain things aside for a little while until we can get those things done. So like my question to you is how, how has that been for you kind of like um, taking a break from Booyah and, um, you know, refocusing your efforts on other things? I mean, do we obviously miss you, but has is there any part of you that's like kind of felt refreshed and rejuvenated being away from it? 
Um, there's, I, I think I've all, I've come to realize that it, this is not like a uh, a crazy realization, but it there there is only so much time in the day. Yeah. And if you want to achieve something, like especially later in life, yeah. and I mean not later, like I'm not that old. I'm turning 35 in a couple of weeks, but yep. you have to give up some stuff in order to achieve anything. Yep. And it doesn't even have to be given up forever, but you have to make time. And it always is. You, by the time you're 30, you probably have filled your life with stuff yeah and whether it's a job whether it's relationships yep your friends your activities There's family too right like if you have any sort of dreams or aspirations or goals like you have to make room that's it there's only so much time in a day and so for you you know you have these morning hours for studying and then you have evening hours and that's just not going to work if we're doing this every Wednesday and you have to put in prep time to learn all these tunes every single week something had to give yeah and I, it's I, I've, I've thought a lot about learning in the past couple of years and it, there's maybe in college I was able to do this where I would yeah. be able to like uh, have a, a late night on a Friday and wake up on Saturday and be able to actually retain things. Yeah. And, but my brain doesn't do that anymore. And in order to uh, actually be successful at learning anything, I needed to be uh, have a, a level of cognizance. And that's why I started studying in the mornings because I realized that at night that I couldn't uh, retain as much. So I needed to like yeah. wake up at five and start my day with it because that was like the most efficient time to jam knowledge into my head. Right, right. And you, yeah, I mean, good point too, right? You're putting in the eight hour work day. Come on in, buddy. So we're just uh, going over uh, Mike D passed his test, man. Yeah. Did it. Yeah. Congrats. Hell yeah. And we were talking about all the study time that he had to put in. And, you know, I was asking Mike, you know, how has it been having to put some music aside for a while to, to focus on other things? And, you know, I mean, it sounds like the answer is um, you just have to come to terms with that. There is only so much time. Yeah. In a day. The, there is a there's a serious therapy to to play music with you guys and just in general and and I notice myself when I don't play Booyah that like I get very restless. I, there it comes into it like a, 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 I'll get into like a very negative mindset very quickly, and it's and it's yeah. almost, it's always you start like fiending. It's there's music. Music is like like a drug for us in in a sense yeah. of like if I don't do it enough, I I start to become unhappy. Um, I can I, totally relate to that. COVID, I was like. COVID, I was, like, financially the best I've ever been. I had a really good job. Right? And, like, you know, it's going great. Um, but I was good. miserable. I was, like, I need to play. Like, I need to play anything, but especially Booyah. Booyah is, like, for me, it's a release. It's, like, your Wednesday, like, get it out. Get to, like, you know, do what you got to do, yeah. all that stuff. And kind of go for stuff and take risks. And that's the beauty of it. And I love is, like, you know, taking the risks and trusting each other and, not having that is like tough for me. Yeah. yeah. And sounds like you can relate as well. Yeah. And, and trying to navigate that of like, uh, how do I uh, stay positive and, and motivated when the thing that it has been keeping me positive and motivated, I don't have time for. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the same way. Do you ever feel this way about like um, going to the gym? Like if you don't get into the gym for like multiple days at a time, you get mm -hmm. irritable. Like I yeah. get really irritable if I don't get my ass into the gym at least like once every X amount of days. You know, if I go too long, I start to get like down, yeah. really down mentally. Yeah. The gym was a, it was a big part of the, the study process. The, yeah. Uh, I needed to get, if I was going to have any sort of success at night, Right. There was, I needed to hit the gym after work 
Right, to get that blood flowing again. And then I need yeah. to drink coffee after dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you had to guess, man, how many gallons of coffee did you drink for this God. prep? Shout out to my sister <laughs> who gave me a Nespresso machine. Oh, baby. Uh, yeah, that That's, thing. Those things are awesome. I, he it has seen some miles. <laughs> um, you know what I wanted to ask you next, man? And this is kind of on the same topic of just coming to terms with, like, I don't know, like exchanging one thing for the next and, and kind of like in the in the interest of progression, right, in life. When I was talking to Billy last time, you know, he met, he actually gave you a good shout out that you were kind of like the grandfather of the booking here, you know, and before before Billy was, you know, all these people, hey, Clay, what's up, buddy? Hi. Actually, hey, you're going to sit right next to Mike here. Ooh. Yeah, Mike, yeah, you're gonna yeah. come closer to me. Woo. The party, the party thickens, baby. We're here. What's up, dude? Party. So we 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 were just talking about. Um, well, you missed some good shit, but it's okay. <laughs> we were just talking about um, how when Billy was here last time, Billy gave a great nod to Mike D as being kind of like the godfather of Arch Street in a yeah, way, yeah, yeah. because it's like, you know, right now it's Ian, and then before that was like Billy and Jesse, and then before that was you, and you taught them like. The ways of, I guess, like Aaron Busick. Mm -hmm. Aaron Busick. I was. That's what I was gonna say. Is Aaron Busick is is the Godfather and who taught us everything. Who's this. I don't know who this is. Oh, dude. Long, long time. Ago. <laughs> Before Mike D, there was Busey. Was this uh, here? Yes. Or, uh, in, he was, okay. Yeah. He was the booking guy he was here. Yeah. At the time, he so worked right? with Nectars at the okay, time. Okay. So I knew yes, the people yeah. that did Nectars were connected here at one point. So that's who that, that guy was? Yep. And okay. he had the throne for a while. And he really put in place a lot of the same processes that are still happening here today, mm -hmm. I think. Um, but my question to you, Mike, is, um, you know, what, how, how is it? to you know see the torch being passed like knowing that you can't have full control over i guess how things run once you're gone um and that goes with booya by the way too right when you're gone for those three months yeah. other people are in charge of set lists now other people are in charge of of song choice now and theme choice now and you know how is that for you kind of letting go of just you know control or, or passing that torch? Uh, well, definitely shout out to Jesse and Billy who, who took it over after me. They were, uh, they did a great job with, with it. Um, it's, it's difficult to, in just my personality to let other people do things. I think I've been trying to, <laughs> trying to learn how to delegate better and be okay with other people doing things. But it's something I've learned over the years. I'm bad at, of of needing to, needing to be in control and um, uh, doing everything myself. But um, Jesse and Billy have done a great job, and I'm I'm happy to see them pass the torch in a way to to Ian and keep it smooth. Because in years past, like with, with Aaron Busick and before there, there have been many times in our street history where the torch gets dropped. Yeah, not totally. Yeah, the torch. Yep. Not passed. Yes. And if there was one thing that I wanted to do is to instill this passing of the torch of, of like the booking and uh, making sure that there's a seamless integration because there's, uh, there's been a lot of people that have been booking the shows at our street over the years and it usually only lasts for I don't know one to three or four years where you're managing this place and at some point uh, it, it, you're moving to another venue or or you're just moving out of the state or whatever I mean yeah the natural progression of you know and it's, it's difficult to find the next person that's going that is going to take care of this place I'd be like in it for the right reasons, I feel like. And it's like want to see something grow, not just like make the easy money doing, you know, easy DJ bar nights or easy trivia. It's like there's something more to Art Street where it's, you know, we definitely pride ourselves in the live music that's come, the bands that have come through here and 
Yeah, see, I, I through the years seeing it, it's it's kind of been different, but it's always kind of had the same idea of like you know keeping it for the music. I mm-hmm. feel like well, yeah, get connected to the music scene. And... I was gonna say the best people I've seen in that role are the ones with skin in the game in their local scene. For sure, right? yeah, they're yeah. they're in a band or playing a couple bands or whatever. Right, and I think uh, especially since like you were in it and the iteration since then, it's like. Um, a lot of the values have been about trying to make it workable for bands to come here and incubate and flourish and yep. and build their audience and and uh, it's like an interesting combination of just like um, not many places you can put on a show like this yep. uh, that are as accessible and have other musicians your age running it you know booking it playing with you probably you know true so, true yeah this is one of the few venues <coughs> that you know I can name off where like. The staff is equally as talented mm-hmm. as the talent that comes in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's sometimes you go to a venue and it's like they are not musicians, so they got into the industry side of things and mm-hmm. they work, you know, front of house, back of house, whatever, or door, or whatever. But here it's like everyone. I mean, almost everyone here is like can hop up on stage with us and play. Pretty much. <laughs> you know I, what I mean? I love that. Like um, one of the first booyahs they went to, Eli, who was working door that night hopped up on stage and sang get down on it with you guys yeah and i just yeah. thought it was the coolest fucking thing i'm like oh my god the doorman can fucking rip let's go <laughs> let's fucking go that was so dope i know yeah. yeah it's it's a really special place man and i gotta give you your flowers for um you know really laying that groundwork you and kind of did it oh yeah, yeah. Kind of... there have been a lot of people who have come before me and and uh at least like with there's a couple pictures around here too in this office that are of like the crazy people that have actually performed here. Uh, Buddy Guy performed here. What? Time. Yeah. <laughs> really? There's a picture of Buddy Guy that, that, that's here. And um, there's been a couple crazy shows that I've seen here as well. Like, I don't know if you guys remember the Nectar's days, um, but there was, I saw Nels Klein and Julian Lage here. Yes, I remember, you remember that. Remember that one? Yeah, I do. I it was like a yeah, just a duo show. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Like you know, <laughs> you know Nels Klein, Wilco, and yeah, like crazy. They just they're here, and then there's this, another show that I saw that was Schmeens of Lettuce, and um, uh, who's that bass player? Chris Laughlin. Oh, you know dude. Guy? Yeah, of course. And whoop, 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 whoop. it was there was Schmeens and the expanded consciousness here, and dude. Which means it's like, you know, always, See, that's one, the one, of my, influence, always like, one of my favorite guitar players. And, and uh, I remember that night very specifically. I was a little bit inebriated trying to <laughs> tell Schmeens how much I loved him in the when there used to be a parking lot out here. <laughs> Actually, dude. Was he cool about it? Yeah, I mean, he was. I was probably a little annoying, but. <laughs> <laughs> dude, actually, this is a great segue. You set me up like perfectly right now. To, um, speaking of Schmeens, you got a lesson from Schmeens. A couple. I want to hear that first. You had a great first lesson with Schmeens story. It had something to do with the giant. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the giant bomb? Yeah. Giant yeah. Bomb. And guys, this yeah. is this is the this is the 420 you know, <laughs> booyah tonight. Uh, we're well. doing sublime <laughs> tonight. So um, let's uh, hear that story. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, lettuce is like my my first real big favorite funk bands, and and uh, I was hitched means up, and he, he gave me a, a lesson. So I traveled down to uh, New York City where he lived, went to his apartment, and uh, you know he taught me some really uh, awesome things about funk music. Mostly is <laughs> funk music is really simple. Stop trying to make it so complicated. And uh, basically, I just watched him play, and that was some of the most m- important stuff. And then at the end of the lesson, uh, he took out a, 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 a water pipe. And, uh, <laughs> it's legal now, you can say it. And, um, and I, I've smoked weed in my day, but like not, I ha- at this time, I hadn't really smoked much weed. And, but I, was, I wasn't going to turn it down. Sure. Yeah, yeah hell no. Well, you, you drove all the way to New York City to have a lesson with this guy. Yeah. And uh, he's kind of your funk funk guitar hero. Yeah. 
Shmi's got me so stoned. <laughs> like, <laughs> that I, I paid him, and then we, we like hung out for a while, and like we listened to James Brown. It was awesome. He was like showing me some really cool like uh, songs that I'd never heard of. And then I remember like he, we, we left probably because I was being weird, you know, just so stoned. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I'm walking down the street, and you know, I I call him up panicking. I'm like, did I pay you? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, man, you did. I was like, cool. Oh, I gotta go. <laughs> He's like, hung up He's like success. Oh, <laughs> like, uh, good on him for being honest. <laughs> He's like, no, man. You yeah. still owe me. Oh, sorry, I was gonna send you an invoice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so he just cast you out into the streets of New York City. Just, oh, yeah. Just like zonked off your mind yeah i don't remember what that day like, was fly bird you have what you <laughs> need <laughs> now <laughs> that's a really good that's an excellent story yeah fuck yeah it kind of reminds me of when we had to go see them um uh it was during like the occupy wall street era and we we uh, went to that drum shop yeah and we like we didn't know what was happening, but we like left the drum shop, and there were just zombies everywhere. <laughs> and we were like in the middle of this, <laughs> in the middle of this uh, Occupy Wall Street protest. I'm sure you have some good stories oh, about I that. I wound up just randomly in those. Yeah, I've, met, I've like tried to meet people, try to buy weed one time. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm down in Washington Square Park." And I get down there, I'm like, "Oh fuck!" Like, <laughs> and somehow still managed to find. It. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> Life will find a way. Life will find a way. <laughs> but we ended up going to a lettuce concert that night. <laughs> Which one was that? Uh, was that? It's tough to remember. Was that was that one where like Roy Hargrove was on that night? Oh, was that the Royal Family Ball night? Yeah, that might have been. Because there was a was night. Terminal Five. Yeah. Dude, I was there. I didn't know you guys, but I was at. That you show. were at that show. I too was at that. That's show. That's funny. Yeah. So I remember Roy Hargrove like fell off. He fell off the stage. The stage. Yeah, I have on that idea. show. We had to take him home one night after I lived when I lived in New York. He would, he showed up to Smalls. He was like, "Give him a jam sessions there," and they say, "Don't meet your heroes, man." We had to take him home, and he was in a rough shape. And a buddy of mine actually ended up like you know, going in the cab and like brought him back. And my buddy like went up to his apartment with him to bring him in. It was uh, don't meet your heroes. Don't meet your heroes. Man. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's... I, I loved him. He was my favorite trumpet player. That I don't know the that. RH factor. Like he was my favorite living trumpet player, like current trumpet player, and still, I mean, still is like probably my top five favorite trumpet players. I grew I in high school. I was I love the RH factor. RH factor was like my shit. It was like yep. Wow, you can make this like funky and dancey and kind of psychedelic and still cool and, like, and still like jazz influenced. And still, yeah. Yeah, uh, check out the previous podcast episode, guys. Um, we talked about some of our uh, desert island, you know, top picks. If we we're stranded on an island, what album we would bring with us? And I think Mundy mentioned R.H. Factor yeah. as one of his top three albums. Yeah, he would he would be stranded on a desert island with. So um, that's like the joint. All right, so on the, we're we're gonna stick with the topic of four twenty. Um, do you remember your first time, uh, you know, trying the devil's lettuce? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I skipped driver's ed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was hanging out with a guy named Batman. And, uh, well, it's what he called himself. Anyway. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, that's what he called himself, and. Uh, yeah, we we smoked out of one of those like plastic bottles. I mean, like, uh, no, I think it was even worse than that. It was just the uh, like a Coke can. It was an Arizona can. Yeah. Like Arizona has a proper shape. And, and and then we realized we were like in a shed with a bunch of bees. <laughs> 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 That's cool. They were all stoned too. Yeah. They were. <laughs> I I a couple days ago actually had a memory. Um, do you guys remember when weed was legalized in Connecticut and it happened, it was, it went into effect at midnight on a Thursday and we were playing here and at midnight, remember how we played legalize it at midnight? Oh, you remember that? <laughs> that wow. was epic as hell. Dude. I totally forgot about that. Wow. But at the stroke of midnight, 
<laughs> that was like we 2018 were. or something, right? <laughs> yeah. It was like I feel like it was right after I moved here. That, I like, think we timed it that way. We on, timed on it purpose. on purpose. So yeah. at midnight we would play Legalize It. Wow, that's production wow. value right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure my first uh, time dabbling was must have been back in high school. Sorry, mom and dad, love you guys. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I think they know. Yeah, for sure. But um, what the hell? My buddy and I like must have gotten a little bit, and it was like definitely that crappy like dad weed. Dad weed with like all ground stuff. Yeah, yeah. Pff, exactly. Swag. It was basically, swag. swag dirt. We called it Law Town Brown. <laughs> What was it? Law Town Brown for Lawrence, <laughs> Massachusetts. <laughs> we had the Law Town Brown, dude. And uh, we were like so, you know, like scientific about like, we didn't have joints, but we we found some uh, thin paper in the front page of the Bible <laughs> in my Yo, basement. Why is it the Bible? You're it's always out. the Bible. <laughs> because it was so thin. It was like, and we like tried to like meticulously roll it perfectly. Wait till like, Everyone goes to bed, and then we went outside, and like, it was one one of those classic like, I think I'm high. <laughs> you know, like, Are you feeling it yet? You know. <laughs> yeah. And it probably wasn't even till the third, second or third time that I was like, actually, yeah. you know, feeling. This it. is it. Yeah. It's yeah. working. It's yeah. working. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it probably took me two or three times as well. But yeah. my, my first time was similar to Mike's, except that there was like six you or seven of us. You had a Batman too? <laughs> no, no, Batman. Batman. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Which Batman? It was Aaron Eckhart, okay? Oh, no, no. He was just, he was just claiming Clinton. he was Batman, okay. actually. Um, anyways, uh, there was a bunch of us, but we were splitting about a bowl pack of weed, and like I was the second person to hit it. It was my first time smoking weed, and I just like coughed it all out of the can. And so oh, you did the party nobody, foul. Nobody got high. The party <laughs> yeah. foul. And yeah. Then, then, and then we smoked cigarettes. That was also my first time smoking cigarettes. You know? Hell yeah. It's a big night. <laughs> and that was, that was two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> big night for me. Welcome, man. Welcome, yeah. brother. It's been great. It's been cool. <laughs> <laughs> my first time, I was like 13, I want to say, and I was on a vacation in the Bahamas. And we were smoking out of an apple. Hmm. And then had the idea to smoke out of a coconut. And this kid climbed up a tree and grabbed a coconut down. And it worked. We, we got it. <laughs> but, like, I just got really drunk that night because, you know, you're 13 and drinking. <laughs> Don't drink if you're underage. But I did. Yeah. And I was also the first time I threw up from drinking. <laughs> and my parents were out. I was in the room. And I got the spins. And, blah. And, like, all this. I forgot to mention. I ate the apple. <laughs> oh so God! Apple came out, and my dad just walked through the door right while I'm throwing up. He's like, "What happened?" I'm like, I ate the apple. <laughs> he just looks at me. and goes, "You don't eat the apple. It's like drinking the bong water." <laughs> and like blue cigar smoke in my face, just a fuck. Like, How are you feeling? You want another beer, Mike? But no. no. <laughs> yeah. Oh great! It's stupid time. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta run, but love you guys. Love you yeah, too, brother. Yeah, we'll see you downstairs yeah. in a little bit. Um, actually, yeah, Mike, this is a good opportunity to transition. I want to hear, uh, Clay, you weren't around for, you might not have been around for some of this, um, but maybe you were. The Booyah after parties, Mike had a couple. Not really. really no, no, I think it was there. just before my time in, in terms of coming to party with you guys, but I've heard lots of stories. <laughs> So you remember living at the farmhouse and it was coming to the end over there and we were we were at a uh, like a dance show. Could I, who knows? I mean, what is even dance? I don't maybe it was before. But, but uh, it was I, I just turned to you and, I, and maybe we had been smoking something and I was just like, we got to move back to Funk House. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I so specifically remember this moment. So for for people that want some context here, um, we lived in the West End for a while um, when we, you know, graduated college. And we lived in the Funk House, which you've heard mentioned many times now. Um, eventually, we were made the decision to move to this farmhouse in South Windsor. And it had a recording studio there, and it had its own house, and it was like 
away. It's, a, it's own podcast in itself. Yeah, and we're, we can actually do. Um, a well, fast night. forward. We're right. back at the Funk House, and we convince <laughs> our two friends, Mitch and Eli, that we needed to move in because it's the cheapest, most fun place <laughs> to live. <laughs> like. Like like a dollar cost fun average yeah. like yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the fun per dollar here was <laughs> through, was the through the roof through the roof yeah. <laughs> <laughs> through the roof <laughs> and I remember bringing you guys there and like the the people that had lived there before completely trashed it and I remember Mitch looking at me and like you want me to live here <laughs> I was like once we clean it up it's gonna be great it's gonna be great, <laughs> it's gonna be great. Dude, you would be that guy. Yeah, like, it's, like I see a lot of potential here. Kind of like, yeah. kind of like the used car salesman yeah. when he slaps the car. He's like, "This puppy's gonna run <laughs> for my good bones." <laughs> this bad boy, he's so drunk in this bad boy. <laughs> exactly. He's so hungover in this bad boy. Exactly. So fast forward, we rip up all the carpets, put new things in, and we start playing booyah. And Mitch is immediately like, "We gotta have after parties every single week." And I was like. <laughs> Mitch, I think that's a great idea. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a really good idea. <laughs> really good. And so what spawned for the next like two and a half to three years was Wednesday nights. Every single night we, we had an after party. And I think they still went on for many years after. They did. After. Oh, yeah. after you guys play one of the that tradition <laughs> carried over for another another probably longer than we actually did it. Yeah, we that did like three been years. A point for the Hartford scene, I think, like when you guys started having parties, I think it was all really like the after party. It was like suddenly everybody had this thing they could latch on to, you know, and like build from there. It and was the, um, afters are important. A place to, uh, you know, get to know each other. Yeah, network. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like that. Um, <laughs> and they were real fun, and it is is really electric feeling. Uh, of those early days of it was completely free and was, some of the nights would be like there'd be like 300 people here and just like over you know never over capacity just right at the sure, legal capacity of, 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 <laughs> of our street always moderated and <laughs> and then we we would rush right over and always be right at the legal capacity of our house <laughs> And so there'd be people waiting people. on the porch for us to arrive. Yeah. <laughs> to open the door and let them inside <laughs> our house. Our house. <laughs> We'd have to like tell Eli, who is running door a lot, We'd be like, Eli, like, go. go and open the house for people. <laughs> <laughs> Get it going. We'll be there soon. <laughs> we got to back up. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so good. And, and it, we didn't have a lot of money back in those days. And we would pass around and be like, who's buying the 30 rack this week for, for the yeah. <laughs> I feel like in the last like five minutes too, the amount yeah. of people showing up. Yeah. It's a good thing that Art Street and Funk House both have a capacity of like 300 people. It's, it's nice that you guys have the same fire regulations yeah. like that. Yeah, it's you pretty know? close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we strictly adhere to them. <laughs> Strictly. Tell me, tell me that story though. Before we started recording, there was a really funny one that you brought up, and I was like, "Oh my god, I remember that." Well, uh, so the the funk house doors were really old, and for, for whatever reason, the the bathroom door would like get stuck a lot. And I remember this one party where um, the, it was getting stuck. Uh, and but we were like, no, it's gonna be fine. Flash forward, there's two girls in the bathroom. They can't get out. They're getting really mad. Everyone around them is just like, open the door. It's so easy. Just <laughs> People got to pee too, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. We only had one bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> and they're getting so mad inside there. I'm trying my best to like Jimmy the Lock or whatever. And I was like, it's just like a, it's like a, like a little a touch thing. You know, you gotta just. Just twist, twist and pull. Like you, like you knew how to get out. If I you, were, yeah. you could operate the door from and the I would, inside. But like me trying to explain that is everyone's yelling behind me. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> so Jesse, the nice guy he is, mm. jumps on a trash can through the through the window of the bathroom, and is trying to save these girls, whatever. And then <laughs> and then he. Hey, he's all the bathroom's on the second floor, so he had like climb up into the window oh. of this bathroom to try and get in 
in yeah. there with that. And so oh, he's man. he's being chivalrous, and now he <laughs> he can't open the bathroom either. And now he's just in there with two girls that are really mad at him. <laughs> <laughs> So me and Eli are, you know, we've been drinking our 30 rack and we're feeling really machismo at this moment. We're like, we're going to fucking kick this thing now. <laughs> <laughs> and so there we're going, one, two, three, and we're both kicking together. We can't fucking get it down. We can't kick this really? thing down. And then it just like opens up like nice and slowly eventually. And then, <laughs> But dude, for like 10 uh, straight up like, okay, maybe 10 minutes or less, maybe five to 10 minute span of just goo goo yeah goo goo of wow. them just like run running start like karate kicking wow, this I door can't you couldn't kick it open our friend dave fiore was living upstairs so there'd be like nine people living at this house at all times <laughs> and our friend dave fiore is living upstairs and and uh, i remember talking to him the next day and he's like i thought there was an earthquake <laughs> <laughs> The whole house was shaking. Dude, my bedroom was right next to that bathroom. I must have been in that bedroom too because I heard that and I thought it was yeah, just a jerk at our party. You I remember I mean? you coming out like oh, about to beat somebody up. Oh, and you're yeah. like, look, oh, it's Mike and Eli. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we must have a plan. Yeah, because we, we would have some random people come through that you know weren't necessarily welcome. And so I was always on kind of high alert if there was like, any mm -hmm. tomfoolery going around. So when I started hearing that, I was like, I'm ready to start bouncing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yep. Floor closed. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, it's just Mike kicking down our bathroom door. That's fine. <laughs> as you were, as yeah, you were. As you were. Just <laughs> so another night of funk house. <laughs> yeah. So the party end, next morning, Mitch gets stuck in the bathroom. <laughs> oh my God. And he just rips open the door. He's just like the, you know, the strongest guy out of all of us. And, you know, me and Eli were kicking down. And I think till this day, we'll still say we like, you know, you like, we loosened you up loosen. for her. No. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but the, it actually you like, it actually broke like the frame off the door. Like, yeah, yeah, and for the next eight years, it was just like this little hinge on the door. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was like so many iterations of locks that we had to jerry rig on yeah. the door. Mm -hmm. Man. All right. Well, I think we got to get downstairs soon. Thank you for sharing some of those awesome stories. Yeah, it was thank fun. You, thank you for, for joining me. us on this uh, next episode. And um, hope to have you back, actually. Yeah. We, uh, we've got a lot more to talk about. I got, I got a lot more summer in me. <laughs> yeah, baby. It's just starting. Yeah. Um, is there anything that we want to promote before we sign off? Oh, um, Friday night, we're playing at Back East Brewery. So come out to that. And then Saturday, we're playing at the Westport Library with West End Blend. Mm -hmm. So uh, get the tickets online. I'll put a link in the description. West End Westport. West End Westport. <laughs> uh, and also, don't forget, guys, come out to Abuya on a Wednesday. Every single Wednesday, we are here. Different theme. It's always a good time. And there's a lot of stories, obviously, that we've uh, had over the years. Mm -hmm. So uh, come make some memories with us. Like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next episode. Love you guys. Bye. Oh, yeah. <laughs>